Hi, everyone. Uh, this is the SIBA call for um, uh, September 9th, uh, 2018. Um, we have an agenda today. Um, I'd like to start with a call for new items, um, but then we have a few items already, and we'd like to finish up with a JIRA review. Um, are there any new items to discuss? Okay, then I'm going to turn this over to Larry uh, for the task staffing analysis. Well, this could be pretty short. I don't know. So I, I wanted to start a meta discussion to, to pull us out of the JIRA tickets where we, we tend to focus on what we can do with the current staffing we have, where the priorities are, and see if there are where people are worried about moving too slowly and uh, if there is work that we need to pull more staffing for. So let me just start there and I have some thoughts, but I wanted to see if there's any uh, um, places people are starting to feel a little pressed. Um. I, I guess the, so. So based on the Jira tickets today, um, all the, the 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 majority of the contribution from the SIBA side is the uh, um, ONF and the AT and T. Is that correct? I and think that's. Do a, we have? Other I think that's a correct assumption. Um, if I look at it, it's mostly AT and T foundry folks and um, ONF. Right. Um, I, 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 I <laughs> um, so, 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 so I, I, I do, I think right now, uh, the thing, you know, I, I don't know whether Mike and Le and Tom, you guys have any comment on this one is the, you know, the, 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 we are taking the, the RD document is going to be, uh, have a, uh, 0.1 release out for review. Um, I, I Tom, Tom, you correct me if I'm wrong. It's sometime this week, and and we're cleaning out the document a lot uh, right now. Um, I'm I'm wondering whether with a with a more better release document can help the community involvement regarding to the scope. Uh, but again, the the document re release will be only internal to the CBA um, CBA. Uh, team right now or group right now um, so it's not out for the whole public uh, uh, community and, 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 and just yet um, and I uh, I guess the, 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 the vote has started a little bit differently uh, once the, uh, once the, there was a fundamental uh, framework established and then vendor and then other will be coming in and um, so I, I have, um, at least based on the the the, the way it has been working for the CBA, it seems like uh, we we do have more observant than the contributor. Um, so so I think uh, maybe ONF and the service provider community need to work together to get this thing up and running and rolling. Um, so I don't know whether with with uh, with more demo. Um, would that, Larry? Are, are you thinking that do we have? A, I think we have done the demo one uh, once and twice. Um, would that be uh, you know make the demo more readily readily available for people? So maybe that can be attract to the to the to the to the community to get engaged. So that's a good point. That that doing for with public demos will show the community both a, where the progress is and b where the holes are. Um, and then you're, you're, you know, in the task staffing discussion, you're focusing on the, on, on the staffing side, which I think is appropriate. Um, one other thing that we can do is approach to this is simply to look at it on the task side. Uh, where are we not making progress as fast as we think we need to or would like to? Um, now we, you know, we certainly understand that there's parallel both the 2.0 going on that 
yeah, in the long term will pay off, but in terms of a short term trial, uh, isn't quite as helpful. Um, so the obvious places to start are how well populated are our metrics? What is not being, what are we not collecting monetary data on and what do we, you know, I think we're making decent progress on the platform for collecting and delivering monetary data, but what monitor, what is not yet being monitored? And that should be um, self-contained enough that it would be a pretty slow, I'm sorry, a pretty fast ramp up to start contributing. Uh, a second issue that I've seen discussed on Slack that maybe isn't immediate, but we're going to have to get to it pretty soon, is, is NEM performance. We simply don't know how the NEM machinery uh, scales as the number of subscribers approaches. Well, the next question is what number do we need to approach? Is it 1,000 subscribers? Is it 10,000 subscribers? And how many ops per second, are, you know, provisions per second are we going to need to support? So I know NIM, NIM performance is, is on the horizon. Um, so what are the other holes? So Larry, I would add um, the database migration as well, because that's something that we need to have some work done on before someone comes and tells us we need to migrate, uh, you know, the very first time there needs to be some foundation in place. Okay, good. So we could, we could maybe, continue this meta discussion as we go through the JIRA tickets, which is informative. Uh, certainly if there's other big topics that we need to throw up there, I'm happy to hear those now. Uh, I guess the biggest message is there's plenty of work to do. Um, and we really need to find a way to get more staff in contributing to it. I don't think there's no two ways about it. Yeah, I, I think, uh, Larry, the other thing is, you know, um, some other item, maybe that's something we can, I, I know this is open source, but at the same time, if we can come up with some kind of the, um, initial um, suggestion or, 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 or approach, and then we can pr present to the community or, or, or regarding to the task, um, I think that, 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 would, that probably, I would say probably require more time to, to have deeper look of what, what what area we need to do in any improvement, right? Yeah, I think it, it, it's a good point that I, I can keep hearing. Uh, we used to have a community manager who was from the Mozilla project that was always reminding us that you have to make the work units digestible and, and on-ramping people as slow as possible, you know, as, as fast as possible. And I'm sure that everyone's heads down on getting work done that we probably haven't done a good enough job of that. Um, so there's you know, defining, carving out pieces of work that people can pick up pretty easily is an important thing to do. But if you're standing on the side, let me just put it out this way, if you're standing on the sidelines wondering where to get involved, I'm sure there are places uh, that you can start contributing pretty rapidly. We just need to put the effort into making that happen. So um, I again, you know, I think in in Vota we we do have the community volunteer which well, who want to be in which lead for each area. Um, so I don't know whether that's the same approach. Um, we we can also uh, um, uh, maybe one of the approaches we can also try to see whether we can get that thing kick off here also. Um, so uh, so I, I guess, yeah, I think I'm more focused on, because on, on my experience with the vote, I'm probably more uh, focused on how do we deliver this thing, right? So, so I think that's probably, I'm focused, more focused on the staffing analysis portion. Um, but uh, but, but uh, I think the community lead definitely will generate um, um, uh, maybe the, the the work can be picked up a little bit more um, definite or something like that. I'm sorry, I, I, my, my, my head is blanked out. But, but I think that, it, that maybe it's just something we can 
you know, look, work on that and then and then see what we can uh, provide a initial suggestion to the community also. Hey, hey uh, Sean. Yes. So we we were you know discussing, and this may be relevant here, maybe not, but so we was discussing you know Vol 187, which is a you know Volta um, story around retrieving attributes from an ONU, for instance, right? Right. Right. Um, and I'm, I'm I'm kind of just jumping ahead to my discussion point. It seems like it might be relevant here, but in, in the um, you know is, is there. I was thinking when we were discussing that, you know, what ties, you know, CBER and the, you know, what the management interface and CBER that go look at those ONU attributes, and you know, what's the might want to interface that would be used to go and and let's say read the the attributes of an ONU, right? And how does that, you know, interface as in, you know, that NEM northbound interface? What's the interface internally that we plan to use to go and get that data? Is that all GRPC protocol buffs or has, has that been thought through at this point? Or, I mean, how, how do we tie, you know, actions in Volta, like get, you know, getting and setting attributes to, you know, something that's not bound to them that wants to go look at those attributes or set those attributes basically is the, is the question, I guess. Is that all tied together at this point? So you're you're, you're kind of asking how how does NIM work? Well, I, I'm just wondering is is there a a plan for like you know how you know, you know we're developing all these you know being able to access these attributes from say an ONU and how how does that how does someone external to CBER like a management uh, an OSS or something go and grab those attributes? I'll set those attributes. Is, is, I guess is what I'm asking. Query or retrieval, right? So, and then yeah, of course you have this <coughs> set, but at the same time, um, the northbound can also issue a query of the object, right? I I, I think this is based on on certain uh, APIs that must be um, uh, exposed from the NEM layer, and and I am the and I and I don't. See, uh, well, at least I hope that we're not just exposing directly. Let me do a set on an object in the lower layers because that, that's that's going to be very specific to a, a Volta implementation. I would I would think that there would be things like let me let me define some pro profiles that 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 might have some specific data in it r related to to Volta, but, but it's just it's just a let me define a profile. The, the, the syntax is let me define a profile with a blob of data in it, and the blob of data is is formatted so that Volta would know it. But it, it wouldn't be so specific that that the upper layer OSS or or ATS operational application knows specifically. I mean, the the, the gener generic uh, thing is let me create a profile with a blob of data. Let me create a speed profile with a blob of data. Let me let me uh, make a let me make a uh, service type and 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 assign it to some profiles. Let me you know make a right. speed a speed profile and let me assign it to some profiles. <laughs> I would I would hope that we're not getting diving into the details of a, of an attribute that's in a model inside of Volta and trying to do a set on that object directly. Well, so yeah, so <laughs> now there, I, was, I was thinking about technology profiles as well. In the you know we create a profile and that that Volta is completely you know agnostic to you know. Specific technologies and just, and that, those the, that profile gets created and the adapters go retrieve it right and then they implement what they need to implement um, in the same way as say an ONU status for instance on an ONU port when it, is that in the same way is that going to exist as a, a profile? No, so there's, is a there's a couple. Oh, no. of status is a, status is a little different. I mean, I think we've defined in in our user stat, stat stories those things that we want to have status on, and I think that NEM exposes that as API that says get O and T status, and that has a list of things that are are defined variables that are part of that. The, let me get the O and T status API, and NEM knows how to go dig down into the Volta layers wherever it needs to go to dig to get them. 
in order to provide the response to that get status, OMT status API. And, and the, other yeah, aspect, I, the other aspect of this is that it's, we're not just doing random arbitrary reads and writes of, that, of those bits in them. It's codified in a particular workflow. And in fact, I know it's not a great name, but the at and workflow is the reading and writing of those, all of that status information to follow a particular pattern and, and expose it an abstraction northbound. So that's how you sort of following the, um, the, you know, connecting the dots from both all the way up, take a look at the at and workflow. Sean, the, the Volt synchronizer specifically, right? If we're worried about being Volt specific, right? There are XOS synchronizers for Volt that say, go into Volt and dig out whatever it is you want. And if it's particular O and U information, then maybe it's a read only and it's a go dig it out of Volt wherever it stores it and present it however. But um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think the synchronizers and the workflows are, I mean, straightforward enough. It's already been done extending for Volt and uh, the uh, the top of rack, the X switch as well. So like conf config information, you're saying as well? Yeah, I, I guess so. And, and so the OMC, the OMCI MEs specifically for an ONU, it's a bit tricky, but it could be something like if it was discovered in Open OMCI here, the, the various settings or the things that have been done to it, that could be bubbled up through NIM as a read-only element via the Volt synchronizer, so that anyone who wants to see it as it's set can can see it. And then if it's changed, it's not changed directly through that interface, but changed through the more uh, let's say generalized way of adding subscribers or you know adding a new OLT or or, 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 or changing a changing a technology profile. Yeah. So I mean, I, I we I, I I will I will take your point, uh, Sean, that we in fact have not defined the APIs that would pull config. We have we have defined the APIs that will pull PM, that will that will monitor alarms, and that will monitor statuses. Those are the those are the use cases and the, the those are the things that have been defined as as to what we want. I. I agree with you that, that being able to pull configuration information could be useful, and that, that might be something we would want to do. Uh, we would want to do it in such a way that it is not implementation specific or hardware implementation specific. We would want to say, well, what are these parameters we might want to, in a generic way, look at on an ONT or, or, or a PON or, or whatever. Um, if there, and, and, and then that can come even in to play with, you know, if if certain ONT adapters are doing things a little bit different, you know, in the configurations are not quite. I mean, you, you if everybody is using an open OMCI and everybody was using the same open um, ONT and open OLT, you would you would hope that you know all of those things would would kind of just match up naturally. But if someone has kind of made their own special ONT that kind of has to do things differently, then getting the config information back might be more difficult to abstract i think and and i guess, i guess you know if if we look at you know how we're using profiles for you know technology profiles for instance or for speed speed profiles you mentioned too um it would is that like a general approach that we take to configuration so we create profiles that are you know technology agnostic and volta doesn't really care what they are right they're just they're just you know entries in a in the kb store and then um, if I want to uh, read what the setting is, I can retrieve the profile and, do, and map that to whatever, you know, I could, you know, NetConfyang or, or whatever uh, I, I wanted to map that to, right? But is, is that a kind of a general approach that is being- I, 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 have not, I have not been wanting the protocol to get into the details of the profile. I've been, I've wanted the protocol to stay out of that to to simplify it and just say, let me give you a blob of 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 JSON text or whatever that is the profile and have that definition and that understanding of that definition be on either end. If I have to create a gold standard in an architecture group somewhere that says, you know, this is going to be AT&T's golden profile, whatever, that person has to know how to construct that profile and then obviously file for Volta or, or an adapter somewhere has to, or a driver somewhere has to be able to know how to interpret it or what, but 
I wouldn't want all the things in the middle. I wouldn't want, you know, SIBA and, and, and OSAM and all of the other things to get into the middle to try to interpret what all of those different fields mean and all those different values mean. Uh, I mean, I mean, you could, you could, you could, you could provide back the blob that you got whenever it was configured, but presumably the the operations team would would know that already. I don't know. Right. But but if I if I if someone wanted to manage you know, Volta with, with uh, NetConf Yang, for instance, like you know, they wanted to do uh, a BBF type configuration model. Yeah. Something well, externally well, I, could I, do a mapping, I, I yeah. guess. Yeah, Mike, so, I want to I want to I want to step in here and say something, please. I've been right. trying to, to to say something here. Uh, very <laughs> similar to what Mike Gasser said is that um, where it is in the user stories and where it has been defined, where where net, where Yang models matter, uh, I think we need to separate modeling from the protocol around the model, and 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 say similar to your question, Sean, is that we could have a preference for a a gRPC northbound model using Yang models, which would, uh, you know, could could be good in one way because it could align us with the ONF project for projects that use GNMI, G, GNOI, and I understand that we can take any BBF Yang models and apply them in that uh, framework, and uh, as long as that's efficient and and is a good protocol between the northbound, then 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 that's that works. There is some question. There are some technologies out there with ODL where NetConf Yang may be preferred because of the way some uh, controllers work from a model-driven basis. Of uh, so, if you do have a, a controller that prefers to go NetConf Yang to the to the uh, SIBA, uh, it could be done. I don't think there's anything preventing us from doing that. I think it's a matter of uh, um, where there's a decision for for preferring one as the, the primary implementation stream, perhaps, and we haven't been specific about that, but that's because we're, uh, you know, it, it's a matter of getting that on the table and, and discussing. Yeah, that. Let, 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 let me suggest this. I think, uh, um, I think that this is, you know, how exactly support data model, and then, you know, I think those uh, the topic we would definitely need to talk about and work it out, the details, And but I think, um, I think Zach has some. Uh, you, you have some Jira ticket you want to go through. Do do, do, do you think uh, maybe we can uh, schedule some different time to to have a sub team to work on the discussion on this area? Yeah. Or you want to? I think that would be fine. Um, we. It would be nice to be able to go through Jira today, but. Um, so more, more importantly, I think the information elements that are uh, part of this. Uh, the configuration exposure, if those are agreed in the key value pair as you mentioned, and we have some persistence of that, then how you use what protocol you use, that's different. But operational data or operational uh, elements, uh, information elements have to be agreed, right, somewhere to expose that from ONU, OLT, et cetera. Yeah, I think that's. Am I making sense? Yeah, cur currently that's happening either in the NEM layer and some of the um, uh, FCAPS layers that are exist in the current SIBA implementation. Yeah, we can we can take this off and offline and um, maybe set up another meeting, Sean. Um, if and probably would need its own agenda. Do, do you want to take point on that? Can you say that again? Uh, would you would you, want, you like to set up a meeting um, around this topic, Sean? Sure. Okay. I'll work with Mike on that one. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. Um, if we move down the list, uh, the next thing that uh, we wanted to talk about was the uh, uh, Cord uh, TST election because um, Steve is uh, part of the Cord project. Um, uh, we got some results in. Um, the people who, uh, who the top five people from this list uh, made it into uh, the core TST for two years. So that's uh, I'd like to congratulate Matt Janare, uh, Cedric Lam, um, Surav Das, um, uh, Alfonso from Telefonica, and Oguz. Um, the other uh, and also um, we had uh, three uh, 
I'm not sure how many people was it one or two from the Vassar steering team. I think, um, but it looks like Murat and I think it's two. I think it's Murat and Jian Piao. Um, and then the list of everyone who's on the TST uh, through 2018-19. Um, uh, Larry, of course, being the team lead, and Andy and Mateo are the other two, and, and David Bainbridge from Siena are the people who we retained from um, the previous year. Um, congratulations to everybody who uh, who uh, made it on, and also thanks to everyone who voted. Um, that's it's important to be a part of this process. So, so when, when you say court, uh, sorry, um, when you say court, which means the C badge is under the core, right? So it's on the same, the same. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of a technicality that CORD is the established Linux Foundation project shared with the Open Networking Foundation that has a, you know, an officially defined governance model under which sub projects get created. Both in C, but technically are projects. But uh, think of CORD as the umbrella, and as everyone I think knows, we haven't really been regularly holding CORD TST meetings recently because we're focused on SEBA. Uh, at some point, we're, we're now getting to the point that we probably ought to have a, T a CORD TST meeting just to figure out where we are and you know what, what the priorities going forward are. OK. Um, um, OK. That didn't answer your question. It's. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It, 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 it did. It did. Uh, but, but, but. Um, um, what, what? So, and, and, and the CBA also has the like a uh, advisory board, right? So, ooh, I guess okay. CBA itself is a one of the project under the core. Well, so, so the, the whole, the whole exemplar platform slash reference design. Uh, initiative is a bit orthogonal to these to these projects. And so SIBA is certainly an, an exemplar platform. It's simultaneously an exemplar platform associated with the reference design, and mm -hmm. but at the same time, technically, it's listed as a project under the, under the court umbrella. Um, it happens that a lot of the people share interest and have worked, uh, you know, span that space. At some point, we will we will still hopefully do another reference implementation release of CORD, and when we do, in all likelihood, it will have significant aspects of what we've done for SIBA included in it, plus stuff that's been going on outside of SIBA in, in the in-CORD space. Um, so, wait for the... Okay, so... Go ahead. No, I think that's good. That's, that's good. Um, uh... Yeah, go ahead. No, I'm okay. I mean, we've we've never officially established any kind of technical governance for the SIBA exemplar platform. Uh, yeah. Arguably, we were just having a meta discussion that such a such a board would would have. We've got it's kind of informal um, in this call, but uh, we don't have like you know. I, I, we don't have. We've never defined a quorum. We've never defined voting and, and all of that. We're just making. We're just making good progress. We didn't. We didn't do all the things that the Volta community did when they made their own TSC and those sorts of things. And whether that's desired from the community or needed is something else. To, I mean, I don't think we ever really breached it because we were moving so fast. Yeah, and you know, maybe we need to do that at some point. Okay. I think maybe after the September release, then that's maybe something. I think the September release is in such pressure is a benchmark milestone we need to meet. Yeah, I think. But that's I think exactly we probably right. do. Need. That's exactly right. That's where we've been putting our energy. And the alignment between Onos and then the Volta, all that kind of stuff. Probably, I think, right now we basically ignore a lot of the alignment uh, on the table. So yeah. It's just. I think that that's something as a project we probably do need to do that. Yeah, I think I think um, I think, but let let's get over the September release first. Um, plus Oran also, right? We need to bring uh, abstraction. Oran, yeah. Or other other technology, right? So. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, 
Well, with that out of the way, um, I think we're ready to dive into Jira. Um, let me bring this up. Um, we have, I'm going to start going over um, the things that we did since last review, which is the 28th. Um, I think that's the accurate date to work from. Um, I think the first couple items are Andy's. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you, Andy. Okay. Um, right. So I've been working on a, a bunch of uh, pun simulated tasks. Um, the SIBA 151, the first one, I think is just kind of the catch all for all of these tasks. Basically, there is a document now in Google Docs. I think it's linked in SIBA 151 uh, that describes how to deploy SIBA with PunSim uh, and Mininet. Um, and get it set up, and then then what tests you can run on it <coughs> to validate the the uh, setup. <coughs> so um, I think this is going to be a good basis for uh, for the development platform and also testing. And I think that's my my next piece of work is going to be trying to get a, a Jenkins end to end test job uh, running using this setup. Uh, but it's working now. People can give it a try. That's it. Okay, thanks, Andy. Um, I know Don is out um, for the next uh, couple days, possibly. Um, I think his things are related to the abstract OLT. Um, it's an application that sits uh, in between uh, an upstream OSS and talks to NEM uh, to create the mappings of various um, objects um, from above. Yeah, we'll be ready to test that once he gets back. Um, so. You know, we've been working through the, the pod setup, and we got pretty comfortable with the, the XOS interface. So once uh, once we're ready, we're probably going to take and have the abstract OOT build we have, plug it into the uh, the pod we have here, and then exercise that next northbound interface that an OSS system would use. Um, but yeah, it, it, you know, at this point now, it's really just an integration territory uh, testing and seeing if it all works. And, and, and Matt, is, I mean, yeah, Matt. Um, is it is it um, ready any form to be demo? Um, I'll let you know when we try it end to end. Uh, I do know that the, we've tested the I calls, you know, setting up an individual OLT, adding subscribers, adding entries to the whitelist. Tested the individual list, and they work kind of in a one-shot fashion. But what we want to do is build out the environment fresh again, and, and then walk through the whole thing kind of in a in a demo-like fashion, and make sure everything flows through, ending with passing traffic. Um, okay. Once we go through that, then we'll be able to say whether or not we can show it off. And, 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 and is, is is it built on the the hippie NMS, or it has a separate its own GUI, or there's no GUI uh, at all? Right now, it is. So right now, it offers no GUI. It offers only what an API that a BBNMS or whatever OSS system would use. Mm -hmm. uh, but we we right now we still rely on the the XOS GUI to kind of see the results of what's been done. Um, and, okay. and visually, it's been consistent. Okay, so 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 uh, at least something. If we were ready to a demo, we can just utilize XOS, right? So I think that's good. Okay. okay. Yes. Yes. It, it it shows off well. Okay. Yeah. Keep us posted. And see whether we, when we can dem demo this. Um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. We'll let you know. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Um, uh, Kailash Suchitra. Uh, yeah, I can speak about uh, SIBA 95 and 94. Um, so the QCT pod, um, this has been built. The test job for the QC, QCT pod 1 has been built a while ago. Uh, the job's running and building our code um, light nightly. Um, there are no physical devices on there. Um, there's no ONU or OT in that pod. So right now it's simply just you know building, uh, deploying the Helm charts and doing simple XOS tests in that job. Um, we should probably, our, in the last couple of weeks, we've been aligning our Jenkins scripts uh, with what Luca has been using um, with the deployments. Um, so we probably need to do that pretty soon for the R core jobs too. Right now we only have one for, we, we have aligned our at and workflow deployment jobs. We should probably get to the R core light one. So um, I'll create a simple task for that and get that done soon. Um, and then C194, um, over the last 
week or two, we've been um, enhancing our test automation framework. So we have libraries now, and now that will um, that can conduct an end-to-end -end, um, test um, for a success scenario in the at t workflow, um, and that um, entails you know creating of the subscriber and adding a whitelist, um, and then validating the discovery of the ONU. Um, sending an RG authentication and executing a DH client. Um, we intend on and we hope to get this job running in our pod, which has the OLT and the ONU device, um, and where we can conduct the end to end scenario. But over the last couple of days and last week, actually, we've been um, seeing a lot of build failures. And over the last couple of days, we've been seeing our OLT device in flex going down. It's down this morning, too. So. Once things are stable there, ideally we'd like to get this at least the success scenario running um, nightly, um, and then adding more scenarios to that. So we, have, we have a lot of work done on the libraries in terms of to automate um, these scenarios and all that. Can 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 you describe and and um, the what you, what I, I'm I'm a little bit. The the term when you say uh, whitelist, what what are you what are you um, considering and what are you using the whitelist for? Um, so, to for for the authentication to happen, you have to um, add it to the whitelist. There's an API on, in the wait agent driver service, um, and the ONU gets discovered when it's plugged in. It gets discovered by Volta and. But it won't, XOS won't authenticate it or it'll. No, you're using the wrong term. It's, it's, it's a serial number, right? The, the list of the serial number. No, no, I, no, I, I understand. But, but it's, it's, not, it's not just a matter of sending a bunch of serial numbers down into Volta to say these are OK. You actually have to tie a specific serial number to a specific ONT number uh, for so the, the, the what, what the integration. What the whitelist does, what the whitelist does and it may be a poor name, but basically if we have any number of ONUs plugged into whatever pawn, if, if that serial number doesn't match up to that pawn port ID for whatever reason, some, in something from the internet, it'll immediately put it into a uh, disabled state. It'll admin lock it. They bought, I'll lock all the uni ports on it. It'll prevent it from passing any traffic EEP or otherwise. Once it's been added to the whitelist, which is basically a way of saying, I've allowed this serial number to be plugged into this pawn port, it is now enabled, and any subsequent EAP traffic or whatever traffic you deem via a profile otherwise would then be allowed to be passed through. But but it's associated technology to a specific ONT port number, not just it's not just to the pawn, but to a to a to a concrete number. It's associated to an OLT line card chassis. So let's say Edge Core one five, and then from there associated to one of the sixteen pawn ports. If it doesn't show up specifically, but, but, but you, have, you, 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 have, you have to assign it to a specific concrete um, ONT number because that's part of the calculation that upstream systems will use in order to say, so, I'm going to put that on ONT number three, yeah. I'm on ONT number 64. Um, yeah. And that's so what Abstract OLT that, does. Abstract, Abstract OLT does for the northbound systems that have static notions of that numbering. That numbering will be consistent northbound. How, what Abstract OLD does is map that from the, let's say, legacy mapping mechanism to the very specific physical mapping mechanism in so in Volta. I, I, I'm, I'm just coming back to the term whitelist, and it's not like you just put, right, and right. push a bunch of serial numbers down into the into Volta. You you actually you actually say okay. ONT number three is this serial number. ONT number five is this serial number. Yeah. ONT number sixteen is this serial number. No, I think right right now, Mike. I think this is just a lot. The authentication, the tie on the name side is the serial number and the pump port. Now, the ONT ID. Is is well, not the layer that's for the user so, user out there, the the authentication. Yeah, so that OLT well, the, number the, the, comes into play when the subscriber is added later to say once we've allowed this ONU to even exist on the network, if a EAP message or subscriber authentication message shows up on that serial number, then we're going to represent them to northbound systems as this, you know, yeah. MAC uh, or NAS port ID, silly ID, na, uh, you know, pawn port ID. Abstraction OSS. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, I think the, so. So the subscriber to the so subscriber to the ONT association, or you say binding or whatever, it happened after the activation of the ONT. Right. So yeah, the the, the scenario is, let's say we provision a new OLT, we've added nothing to the air quotes whitelist, which may be a bad name. If we plugged in a dozen ONUs, we'll have an OMCI communication channel with them, but nothing else. Basically, the unis are shut down. You can't do anything with them. Some time passes later and say, oh, we actually want to add maybe five subscribers. Those five subscribers get added as a separate individual API call to the serial numbers that have been loaded. That binding from that subscriber to that serial number to that onboard ID get, maps you back to northbound systems. I, I, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. The, the northbound system is not going to pass you an ONT serial number down with a create subscriber message. The northbound system is going to pass you a concrete ONT number. So I'm just, for me, I'm just getting hung up on the term whitelist and, a, and, and the term of, of, of assigning ONTs into the, I mean, I, I agree with the process of what you're describing. The number, you keep the ONT off of the thing. I'm just saying the process of assigning a serial until you get a number should be, you get, you get a concrete ONT number and, and you say, this is serial number, serial number so-and-so. Because, because if, I ever have to replace that ONT in the field, I'm not going to re-push the, the provisioning flow. ONT number one off of pawn port number two has a subscriber provisioning flow. And if I have to push a new a new a new address, a new a new serial number to that ONT because the ONT failed and we had to send out a run, I'm gonna say I'm not gonna reprovision any of the subscriber services. I'm gonna say ONT replacement number one is now serial number, new serial number. And so it, it needs to be a tie between an ONT serial number an ONT number to a serial number that's that's what's assigning the serial numbers down into the system because they might change and we're not going to repush subscriber flows. Subscriber flows are not going to get repushed if I get a new ONT serial number. I've already put service on ONT number five. Uh, it's not going to come down from the OSS again. And Mike, they need to be kind of independent in there because we can have situations where we're going to be pushing provisioning down before no and you is ever in existence. It's still sitting on the truck. It could be sitting there waiting, right? Or you could have, and, and, and then the serial number registration happens at that time when the when 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 the tech is out there, as opposed to always assuming that I have a ONT and I got a serial number known, and then the subscriber provisioning comes down. I, I, so I, I guess what I'm saying is I guess what we need in in the API um, that's northbound is we need a I want to take serial number and assign it to ONT port number so and so and I thought we had that covered in my use cases that on an well, configure so of an ONT of we were going to be so abstract OLT presents that API and so I, we might need to sit down and look through that API and see what's made available yeah, there. I, I think Matt, this, let's this, do that. Yeah, let's let's do that. I think there's some maybe um, internal disagreement here. Um, Zach, can you move on? Well, I, don't, I don't know if there's a big yeah, disagreement. I just just want to understand the process and 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 figure out. Okay, how yeah. Works. Okay. Yeah, and, and and from the provisioning system side, I just wanted. I'm just concerned about how much independence that there is between these different. Um, something has to occur before the other because that that affects what we do. But you're assuming. Okay, great, thanks. Um, Zach, back to you. Okay, um, moving on. Um, so I think Mateo's items are next. Um, yeah, so the, there was a small issue in the um, persistent in the survival of honors to restart because we were repushing the application but we were not pushing the configuration for those applications again that has been fixed um, we had an issue where the whitelist the serial number identified in the whitelist were not case insensitive so we had some uh, um, mismatch in the between the serial number that was printed on the box and the serial number that was reported by the box to Volta and we added uh, uh, the NAS ID and the IP to the CD server uh, response for the OLT device so that the guys at the foundry can get it to work with uh, their radius. Um, 
and we had some uh, some issues in the workflow manager uh, that were actually um, due to a strict validation in the core, so we just fixed that. And CBA 201, we just moved around the monitoring charts. Uh, just as a note, they are not working uh, at the moment because we haven't migrated them yet to the new format that Volta is uh, exposing. Uh, we're going to work that in the next uh, week or so. And CBA 202, we added the subscriber, uh, their subscriber remote ID uh, to the model uh, for the foundry to use it with the Redis server. And that's it for me. Okay, thanks, Matteo. Um, Saurav? Yeah, um, this particular story is about uh, the ability to um, create lag groups uh, on the X switch. Uh, be able to edit them, um, you know, add members, remove members, and and, and uh, delete the group. And um, uh, for a while, we, we identified a bunch of problems in the Broadcom software on the X switch, uh, and I got a new build from uh, uh, Broadcom, and I tried that out, and it seems to have fixed the issues. So right now, this story basically says that we have a bunch of tests written to just check the X switch lag group functionality, and it seems to be working. Um, uh, there are other stories that cover actually bringing out that functionality by writing code in ONOS that actually controls and manages that group and so on. Um, we right now have a, um, uh, no resources to work on that, but those are separate stories, but we will uh, get to it. At least the switch works uh, uh, really well right now for the lag groups. Okay, thanks, Saurav. Uh, the next few items are Scott's. Um, looks like a lot of these are bug fixes. Yeah, the first one had something to do with the leading service instances causing validation errors. Um, there's a workaround, kind of a hasty, hacky fix for that. We need to kind of take a longer look at that at some point. Um, alarm simulation. Um, so this is uh, part of the, the work on FCAPs from uh, Volta into the NIM. So I did two tasks. Uh, one of them was adding alarm simulation. So there's now a simulate alarms uh, command line option in Volta um, that works with the OL, open OLT adapter and will send out simulated alarms. And then uh, we can also show that these alarms will show up in uh, Kibana inside the NIM um, using our logging charts. Um, uh, so Scott, is, is, is that, so the simulation, the simulation is only available for people downloading the CBA or when they're downloading the VOTA code, did this alarm simulation already exist? Yeah, it's it's now built into VOLTA. So this was a change to VOLTA, not a change to uh, XOS or, or the other core components. Okay. And uh, um, Julie will probably need to make aware the Volta will understand. Volta community will know about this. Yeah. Yeah, it's currently only in the Open OLT device. So I've been talking about with some of the other guys about extending it to the other adapters uh, because it might be useful to do this in PonSim and and others as well. So uh, is might that, uh, that on generalizing it? Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Is, is that the interface or something like that? Well, how do you Gen talk to the Open OLT adapter? It's yeah, so the there's, uh, we, yeah, we, it does talk to the adapter. So it goes through the normal um, sort of plumbing that the CLI does through multiple layers of abstraction and through gRPC API, just like all of the other adapter operations. Um, there's now a simulate OL or a simulate alarm um, function inside the adapters, and that will invoke the uh, simulation. Okay, I'll talk to you later in regarding whether we can make a comment for all other adapters too. So, okay. Sure. Sorry, I interrupted. Oh, yeah, no problem. Let me see what else is in here. Um, error deleting OLT device. I think that was actually resolved as part of a CBA 227. I think that cleared this one up. Um, custom cross-connect configs. I think we actually had that 
done for last week that was the ability to um add those custom uh, fabric cross connect service instances for uh for example a vm that needs to be cross connected that's not part of the uh data plane um, um or can, 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 can I interrupt a little bit sorry sure um so the 236 matt is there something um uh tie into you guys also doing um I the thought, deleting of um, OT device I mean, I know we recently got that delete interface working. Um, I just was, was it a problem with XOS not being able to call it correctly or was it that Volta was just not returning or, or, or deleting it properly? I know that if you delete it in, in the wrong state, it, it doesn't quite work, right? Like if you delete it while it's enabling. You need to disable before you delete. Yeah. Um, I know if you go into the Volta CLI and you start disabling, then if you delete it from the DOS interface, Yes, we get out of sync. Yeah, that's what we ran. We ran into issues where if we do things directly through Volta API and then decide to go back into DOS, things can get out of sync, uh, which can cause problems. Um, but and, and, and Scott, are you aware about, about the the things uh, Foundry has been doing <laughs> regarding to when you when you work on the two thirty six on this one? Yeah, um, we haven't so told I, any people about that scenario, but yeah, we we don't know if we got. If we tested before or after two thirty six. Yeah, I don't know. We it was I mean it was Monday, I think. Was Monday. yesterday? Was it yesterday? Did yeah. you upgrade the the uh, boss piece? If it was part of master, whatever the master images were. Um but anyway, I mean we can try it again. It's just I considered what we were doing bad behavior because we went around DOS went into CLI or API directly and started messing with stuff and I wasn't sure how <laughs> much it would recover from that. Okay, so some potentially what Scott did actually do a root cause, root cause of right. the root on that one. Okay, right. still okay. Right. So I, think I mean, the, just the, I think the general idea might be here with this, and this is something that might be a, worth a story on its own, is the ability to you know protect ourselves at every layer to say if somebody decides you know me or whoever or somebody on the CLI does things there that that doesn't you know break. That the upper level layers or the upper level layers can reconcile those changes in some way. Um, otherwise, folks are going to you know jump past one layer to get to another to do troubleshooting, and then everything's out of sync. Right. I don't know how what the you know there's a good way of dealing with that other than you know preventing access to certain layers. But you know when we were working at both layers, things could get messed up. Yeah. So I think one way to prevent that kind of issue is that uh, the lower layers send some kind of events on a bus so that the upper layer can carry them up and adjust themselves. Yeah, yeah, that would do it. I mean, everything else is flying on the same Kafka bus right now anyway, so it could just be more of the same. But anyway, it was just something Eventually. generally speaking that might be worth you know, about general durability. Yeah. Things like that. And then again, right, so that's thinking about, you know, for the SIBA, you know, perspective. Um, so you, you, you have a whole pod overlook of that, right? But at the same time, on the just Volta and Onos layer, you, that, that also needs to work. So, so just in case some, there are people not, not adapting CBA, right? So, so sure. I'm sorry I say something, <laughs> but, but, but I think probably both approach you need to consider. Okay. Sorry, yeah, and that's Scott. part of what we've been testing is, is whenever we go through our testing, we'll make sure that when we flow through all the SIBA layers, it does what it needs to. And then if we decide to, like, say, manually use the OLT app in Onos to push static flows, that still works as well. Um, so it's really just everyone making sure everyone else knows what's going on is probably the, the real ask. Yes. And that's why I asked the question. Okay, Scott. Sure. So let me try to remember where I where I was. So I think... Um... <laughs> 198. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 198, um, client-side ORM converts null in integers to zero. So th this was an issue with the ORM. If if a database field was assigned none, it was getting, um, it, it was returning its default value, which was zero. And then um, we couldn't differentiate in the synchronizers between database fields that were set to null and database fields that were set to zero. So that's been fixed. Um, OLT service model policy fails trying to instantiate ONO service instances. This was just another bug. Um, the model policy was trying to create an ONO service instance, and you don't actually want one of those um, in the data plane. So that that was we hard coded around that one, to prevent that from happening. Okay, I think that concludes my stories. Thank you, Scott and everyone. Um, Suchitra.
or if Kailash can talk to this? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Configuration definitions for PNG port mapping. I'm not sure you prefer that one. Well, I, I know we have a BNG port mapping task which hosts the BNG port mapping to access and retrieves that to verify, but uh, maybe something else. I, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, and actually, it seems like a um, pre configuration um, test or configuration um, automation uh, script that she wrote um, prior to running our test. Okay. That sounds good. Thanks, uh, Kailash. Um, Siba85, um, is William on? Yes. Um, so I was, so the, what, was, what was remaining on that was uh, getting the KPIs from Kafka and sending the own app on to the, to this. Um, and I finished that. Uh, now I'm the best. I, I, so it says analyzed, but I also implemented that. Um, so that's done. Send the KPIs up there. So oh, KPIs and alarms are both being sent from Kafka to the That's that ticket anyway. Okay. Thank you, William. The next couple um, are mine. Um, the uh, there were some issues with our QA process where um, doing an update wouldn't fully rebuild all the containers, and this uh, I changed it so that the um, things would rebuild properly so the tests would work properly. Uh, Siva 219, um, previously the synchronizers had, there were, I basically had to add a new log level um, that's a trace log level um, because some of the synchronizers were logging very noisily and it was hard to uh, tell a signal from noise in those logs. Um, so uh, we haven't really had any uh, problems with this because, uh, but there is another level you can kick up if you're having errors with a specific synchronizer. And SIBA 104, um, this was an FCAPS thing uh, to deploy Elastic Stack. So this is uh, both uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, logs of the low-level containers and um, uh, Elasticsearch and Logstash to read things off of the Kafka message bus, both from Volta and XOS um, into uh, Elasticsearch and then Kibana for the interface. And this is the thing that Scott was using to handle some of the other um, FCAPS uh, work. Uh, that's it for me. Um, William, is this last one also? Uh, yeah, so that was just, that, that's really just, yeah, that was just certain headers for the VEST message format that I had sent, put up, and also some, and also some other things to allow ONAP to identify the pod, which we've also done. It sends, like, the pod ID and COID up now. Um, that's it for that one. Okay, thank you. Um, as it's the top of the hour, I'm going to um, hold off on going through the other uh, in progress or to do items. Um, we can hold that for next meeting next week. Um, are there any other comments? Um, okay. If you have anything to add to the agenda, please add it. I noticed that there was something wrong with the um, sharing preferences, so you should be able to, to uh, if not edit, um, add uh, a a comment to have another item added to the call agenda for next week. Um, and we'll go over um, other to do things at the next meeting. Thank you all. Yeah, and also I'll see what it would, well, the ONT registration portion and also the data model stuff. And then maybe we're going to have a side meeting or, you know, just smaller discussion. Um, sure. Okay. Thanks, Sean. All right. Thank, thank you. Bye, all. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.